everybody. Welcome to the YouTube Legion show hosted by Christina Smallhorn and myself, Malcolm Lawson. Christina and I have generated millions of views on YouTube, tens of thousands of subscribers, and earned hundreds of thousands of dollars in commissions from leads we generated off our real estate YouTube channels. And on this show, we mastermind about using YouTube in our real estate businesses. Mm -hmm. Today, I've got a very special guest, uh, one of our very first guests on the show back in February when he was about uh, about 17, 1800 subscribers on his channel. And he just passed a huge milestone of 5,000 subscribers on his channel. So we knew we want to have him back, which is huge. So Ken Pozak, welcome, man. Thank you for coming back on the show. Thanks for having me back. Round of applause. Round of applause for everybody. Yeah. Okay, well, hold on. Okay, we got to do, uh, do the high five with Ken. <laughs> we can try. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, dang. All right. Let's just smack him right in the face. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks so much for coming back on. This is going to be fun. Um, sure. So can you tell us a little bit about 2020 and your YouTube channel, what some of the numbers look like for you? Because I think that out of all the agents that I mastermind with and I talk to, I think you may have some of the highest and most impressive numbers from YouTube out of everybody that I've talked to. So what are your numbers looking like for 2020 from YouTube? I think for, I mean, for me, the most uh, impressive number is the actual sales that we've had from, from the channel. And so, you know, for me, it wasn't all about, I mean, the subscribers are huge because that's, I want subscribers. I want views, right. Those turn into calls and leads and that sort of thing. But uh, we had just under $20 million in closed volume this year from directly from YouTube leads uh, that resulted in just about $550,000 in commissions. Uh, and so that's people that literally, Hey, we, we found you on YouTube. And so, um, but like you had mentioned early on, we, we gained about 3,500 new subscribers this year and uh, about a half a million views or so on the videos that we put out. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. Half a million dollars in commission from leads from YouTube. I mean, you're really proving the model that this is really a legit source of lead generation for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. it seems like your channel's really taken off in 2020. So what, uh, compared to like 2019, how, how long have you been doing these videos or YouTube? Just over two years. Yeah. What, what lessons do you think you've learned in 2020 that you've applied to your channel compared to 2019? Like why, why did your channel really blow up in 2020 compared to last year? I think focusing in on like uh, topical conversation pieces is, is big, you know, focusing more on just like, uh, so last year it was really more around like new construction community tours and uh, very, very specific long tail keywords. And I knew that if people watch those videos that they're probably going to be a higher quality lead, but they weren't getting me like massive views, right? They were getting a hundred views on my videos and that sort of thing. And so when I started looking more at like the more broad topical videos, but still sticking sort of like to Orlando, like, Hey, how coronavirus is affecting Orlando, right? So right. that's a big, you know, a big piece. Uh, you know, I put out one video, I had like, you know, 10,000 views in 24 hours and I, I gained like five or 600 subscribers from that one video. Uh, so getting a little bit more topical and getting more purposeful on the videos that we were shooting around our content creation schedule, I think is what attributed to some, some of our success this year. I love it. So really like your content strategy, the types of videos that you're actually putting out. So instead of just mm -hmm. doing tours of you know, new neighborhoods, you're doing more clickable content that makes people yep. actually want to click. Yeah. It's, it's funny how like that's, that's what a lot of people see is that they they're putting out good content and then they have one video that really takes off and they, you know, they double their subscribers or they get 500 subscribers from one big video. Yeah. Um, and then no. you're chasing that from the rest of the time. You're like, how do I do that again? <laughs> unless, unless it's the one that's so, like one that you never intended, right. like a dog yeah. pee video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that then it sucks and you have a hard time like shaking that one off <laughs> but you don't want to get rid of it because it made you all the views and stuff and the yes. subscribers yeah <laughs> right. i lived that <laughs> for, for context everybody she had one video about how to get dog pee out of your carpet which blew up she gained a bunch of subscribers from that one and you're like I'm, I'm the dog pee girl now you're i was <laughs> for like two years the dog pee girl they hated uh, it but <laughs> you had to work very hard uh, to get rid of that. Get around um, that. Yeah. It's still on my top 10, which really sucks, but at least it's like getting buried. <laughs> you know? Right. 
Yeah. You have a conversation with Daryl Eves, and he was like, "Well, you got to make more videos about dog pee." Apparently, no. He, <laughs> he he gave you a choice. He was like, "Either you can make videos more about, um, you know, alternative housing, and, or you can make more videos about like cleaning and dog pee." And I went, "I never want to do another dog pee video again." He started laughing. I was alternative like, "Housing, it is." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, affordable alter alternative housing, it is. So that's, I mean. Which is fine. You know, I like talking about it. I think that was a good decision on your part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think that worked out for me. <laughs> yep. Actually, I so I know, uh, Christina, you know, Daryl, I, I hired him earlier this year as well. Uh, or I hired him earlier this year to kind of consult and say, okay, where should I, I go? Here's what I want to do on my YouTube channel. And, and one of the other things he had mentioned that we really dug into was the repeater videos. So mm -hmm. like looking at some of the success you've had doing something similar three, four months later. And so mm -hmm. we really leaned into that stuff that did really well last year. We just kind of did a very similar update right. to that video. Mm -hmm. And amazingly, like those ones, they get great views. They, they play really well off of one another. And so um, that's another thing we, we leaned into this year that really helped. Yeah, I love Daryl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome, yeah, super good guy. Yeah, I mean, one thing Daryl teaches is creating the, the buckets of content, right? So Christina's one of her buckets is alternative housing. And like, that's what you're talking about, essentially. You have a very successful video, you make more videos in that similar bucket so they get suggested to uh, alongside of it. And you know, if somebody liked that first video that you have, they'll like these other ones uh, that you create as well. So what are some of those videos for you? What kind of, like, what's your, I guess your buckets of content for your channel? Yeah, so right now it's become, um it's become like, we've got a few different ones. We look at entertainment and then also it's like searchable content for people looking to move to Orlando. So our, our buckets have become uh, vlog style videos where I'm just talking about the market overall, those do fairly well. I talk about Disney, like Disney's yeah. huge in Orlando. And so for us, we're trying to use that as a jumping off point. And so a lot of our clients that reach out, they're like, hey, we're huge Disney fans and we're also looking to buy a second home or we're looking to relocate to Orlando. So that's become my target. Uh, so yeah, it's vlog style videos and then very searchable, like moving to Winter Garden, moving to Windermere, moving to those kind of videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love I love your style of videos because you're kind of combining, so, so many of us, we just do talking head videos. I pretty much never leave my studio, uh, but you're kind of combining information as well as your vlog style. Um, with a kind of like a Gary V style in your videos. Are you doing a lot more Disney stuff? Are you still doing a lot of Disney stuff in your channel? No, we're not, but next week we've got uh, three videos scheduled just for Disney. So yeah. we're gonna do Christmas, Christmas at Disney, um, buying a second home close to Disney. And then I forget the third one we've got going on, but we've got three that we're gonna knock out next week. Um, Cause right now there's a lot of people coming, you know, especially as things get chillier in New York and Jersey and Connecticut, people are looking to get a Florida house. And so uh, that'll be, timely do you have a, like a team of people that are working on your channel with you like do you do you have somebody that edits do you have someone else that films do you i mean like how are you doing this yeah so the, the progression like last year it was me and uh me carrying them out on my camera and then i had an editor and then earlier this year i hired a videographer who every thursday we shoot and so um it was just one a week and then now we're doing two a week uh, same day we just go out and shoot two at the same time um, and so he's gotten so busy with his real estate business because he also is a real estate photographer. Mm -hmm. And so he's now hired an editor. And so he doesn't charge me anymore. For him, it, it, it really became a, uh, a leverage point for him. Mm -hmm. And so I said, listen, as long as the quality doesn't go down or it goes up, hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, then we're good. And so he hired a really great editor. And uh, that's kind of what our team looks like. That's cool. fantastic, man. Yeah, that's great. I mean, if you're making five hundred thousand dollars in commissions, like, yeah, you can absolutely uh, uh, splurge to hire a, a videographer and an editor. Yeah, yeah. So he's um, so he's kind of on he's on a salary now. So it used to be per video, and mm -hmm. uh, and now he's like, hey, every Thursday you work for me, and our goal is to do again three videos a week now. So we're going to do two, one talking head video. So it's me shooting it. I send it to his editor, and so that's a you know completely uh, cost savings, right? He doesn't have to come show up. And then we're shooting two in person every week. Yeah, I love that so much. And so are they doing your thumbnails for you as well? No, and so that's that's the one piece that I struggle with still. I know we could do better at titles. I know we could be, do better at thumbnails. So that's something that I, I wanna dig into and get even better going into 2021. But no, they basically, they send me, um, so they send me four videos, one for Facebook, 
uh, that has a different ending. So it says like, like our page instead of subscribe to our channel uh, mm -hmm. at the end. Um, and then it's one, one formatted for YouTube and then two social posts. So one that we can go on my IGTV and then one that can go in my Instagram uh, feed. And so like kind of a teaser video on here's what's coming. So they send me those four pieces for every video that we do. And then I'm the one uploading and doing everything else. So um, with your titles and your thumbnails, are you sticking them in the group? I mean, we always help each other out with the titles and thumbnails and stuff. No, I need to do more of that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, and just to let anybody know that's watching that doesn't isn't part of the group. We always help each other out with the titles and thumbnails. It's not a competition, you know, like we're not trying to squash each other. We're genuinely trying to help. Oh, you know, yeah, you guys together. are amazing. Like I, I've learned so much from afar from like just watching you guys on the channel. And so I usually just steal your ideas and then go from there. Well, that's uh, that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, like yeah. uh, we all do that. I mean, my, one of my most successful videos just recently, I totally ripped off that thumbnail from Graham Stephan. Right. I'm like, I've oh, never sure. even never met, never made a uh, style of thumbnail like that. And I was like, huh, I'll just do that, you know. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> it worked yeah. really well. So that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing that Daryl teaches is that you should find other channels that are really successful in the niche. And figure out, reverse engineer what is working well for them. You know, what thumbnails are working well, what kind of titles are working well, what kind of editing styles working well for them. And I mean, that's what we can do as real estate agents. We can kind of learn off each other and see what's working well. Um, but yeah, so the other day or today, I published a video and I had an idea for, in my head of a title that I wanted. And I was like, yeah, I'm kind of wishy washy on that one. And so I posted a poll yesterday and I had four different title uh, variations in there. And sure enough, 20 people voted for one of those titles and only like two people voted for the one that I originally liked. So, you know, it's a great way to get some good feedback on there. And what's the most clickable title. And I went with that most clickable title that everybody voted on. Mm -hmm. So just another way to kind of, you know, use the groups and uh, use Facebook to work on your titles and work on your thumbnails. Absolutely. Do you use your community page at all, Ken? I don't. Um, so some of the, so we, we have done some more entertainment, like local stuff. Um, the best donut in Orlando, the best coffee in Orlando, uh, the best pizza in Orlando. And I've, I've posted those to our community and have picked up subs that way and definitely views. Uh, it's a lot of people argue that my, my best choice wasn't the best choice and which is fine. I think it's awesome. Uh, so that with that local, like hyper local stuff I have, um, but I don't like have a, my own group per se. I meant the community page in your YouTube. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I started running polls on that, and like, yeah. I was shocked to see how many people actually answer. Like, oh way more than way more than they ever would on Facebook. It's amazing. Yeah, and so I like <laughs> even um, I put one out two weeks ago, and I just said, "Hey, um, we're creating our content calendar." For next year and i'm curious why you subscribe to this channel was it one of these four reasons or something else put it in the comments mm -hmm. below i had 73 votes in like 24 hours which mm -hmm. i would have that kills facebook for me yeah. and um and me it was too. like oh a lot of people said we loved um we loved that the, the luxury home tours and so for us they're like okay cool so we need to dig into that a little bit more um and then other people said you know we loved your you know your your coffee you know coffee shop kind of that sort of thing, figuring out the best of Orlando. And so those two become kind of where we're going to lean a little bit harder. Well, that's how a good way to figure out your buckets too. There you go. Right. That's, <laughs> that's a good, good. You could literally post what type of content do you guys want to see on this channel? Yep. And, it, and then like have the ideas and that make, that would, that then you'll know exactly what your audience wants. Cause you're asking them. That's smart. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. going to steal that idea. Thank you. That's what this is about. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the th hardest things for us as real estate agents to comprehend is that this is not a competition uh, with one another, w even though, you know, like we're like, oh, we'd love to have that many views. The viewership on Ken's channel is completely different than the viewership on Malcolm's channel. And that's why we all try to help each other because it actually benefits all of us. If we do this, if we yeah. all help each other out, all of our channels get better. It isn't, right. it isn't a competition at all. The, yeah. So people get it twisted because they're like, oh, I, you know, there's people in my group that are in my market. I'm like, yeah, and they're not going to like you, but they're going to like him, but they're not going to like him and they're going to like you right. get over it. Stop. Yeah, and they actually, it's, it's funny how many leads say that like, Hey, um, I was watching so-and-so's videos as well. And yours actually popped up. And I kind of think that based on your history and they'll, it's funny because 
I'll have said something 10 videos ago that they found and they're like, you know, you said you're from this place and I just kind of gel with you a little bit better. I think you might be a better fit for me. And so you're absolutely right. Um, they, and yeah, you just gotta like, stop, like, stop with like, they, they stole my lead. No, they did not. <laughs> they just yeah. happened to like that person more, but the next one that's that right. comes along might like you more, just relax. Right. Yep. <laughs> just yep. relax. Yeah, I agree with that. Totally. Like you, you build that relationship with some people, but other people may not, they may not drive with you. They're going to build a relationship with someone else. But that's, that's the good thing about video in the first place, because you've already weeded out the people that could totally suck for your personality. Right. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> they, they've already like, they're like, Ooh, that girl is going to get on my nerves. If you met them at an open house, you don't even know what their personality is. They don't know what yours is. And sure enough, you're like 30 steps in and you're like, I want to drown these people in a small puddle, just take their head and shove it in the water. You know, <laughs> like you're what you, and you know that if they had watched enough of your videos, they would have never picked you either. You know, right. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's life great. Get, life gets a little bit easier when you're dealing with people that already know, like, and trust you that also have a very similar personality as you. Exactly. hundred yes. percent. Especially if you compare these to like Facebook leads, they are like the worst, like the Facebook worst. leads, yeah. you know, if you get a 2% conversion rate, you're doing pretty good, which you're means killing you it. Yeah. You have to track down 50 people and hound them and like constantly call them up and they don't want to talk to you. They don't know how you got their contact information. This is completely different. This is them coming to you, knocking on your door, calling you, you know, hey, can you help us out here? Facebook yeah. leads used to be good though. I will I will say that to to the grave because yeah. I I mean I was one of the first people that figured out how to do ads and stuff. And I would give these free uh, cost comparison, you know, analysis. I got a lot of leads from that. Real people, genuine people. But they also had seen some of my videos that I was posting on Facebook there for a while too. And before right. Facebook had the business pages kind of on lockdown with paid, pay to play. But uh, it, they used to be good. They're just they're just garbage now. I don't even it's waste time on it. I'd like to hear your guys' uh, take on that. So I, I am thinking, okay from here, okay, like organic leads are definitely where we want to focus in mostly on, but like we also post to Facebook and, and honestly for 20 bucks, I can get 5,000 views on Facebook. Right. And it's a semi-targeted list, not as good as you used to be able to target. That's for sure. But, mm -hmm. um, do you guys, had you see anybody crushing that, uh, respect and here's where I'm going with that is like, do you start using that as like a digital farm? Because if I can say, Hey, this video on, like I live in Windermere, like so in Windermere, there's a new home model tour. I can have everybody in the entire city of Windermere see this video. And oh, by the way, they also get my postcards and they also see me at the open house. I think it's a good forced multiplier when you're looking at video. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, I guess you, anything you layer on top of layer where they're constantly like, it's your you're basically product placing everything in front of them. So they, you become, you're, you're, you've already made that uh, established a brand because they are like, mm -hmm. I know that guy. How do I know that guy? Because you've done it in an ad, you've done it with a postcard. Right. I think if you just did it with an ad, it wouldn't work. But if you're right. doing it like, like a layer on top of layer on top of layer, yeah, that's gonna, mm -hmm. that makes sense because it's almost like people automatically know Coca-Cola, but they may, may have never drank a Coca-Cola or bought a Coca-Cola, but they know that, that brand because they see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it's it's smart to do it that way, but um, I just I I don't know I I don't I don't waste time on Facebook anymore. <laughs> I, the well, only time no, I Darryl, ever buy a huge Facebook fan, right? I know he he does yeah. like it, and he's been trying to like in his uh, he has an ultimate co coaching course type thing after you've taken his other course, which I'm a part of, and he's shown us some things when it comes to that, and and I I agree that it has its place, but I just don't like it. The only time I ever uh, advertise on Facebook is I advertise a listing for a client, and it's a very short video of like little uh, moving parts of the house, like the highlights of the house. It has a swimming pool. It's on a lake, and it's in a really uh, desirable neighborhood neighborhood. That's it, you know, and then I'll advertise mm -hmm. the house. Um, but other than that, I don't, I, I don't advertise me because I don't think really anybody gives a crap about who I am. So yeah, fair. <laughs> I think that Facebook is great for retargeting people. So if somebody discovers your YouTube channel, they go to your website and then you can cookie them and retarget them. And so it's a great way for you just to stay in front of them for, I think six months, you can retarget somebody who mm -hmm. visited your website. Um, so yeah, to that effect, mm -hmm. like that is a good way to just kind of, 
sink your claws into them and make sure you're staying in front of them. And I believe you can also do that with um, Google Analytics. If you have Google Analytics installed on your website, you can retarget people with YouTube ads who visit your website as well. Mm -hmm. So one mm -hmm. thing I'm doing with Facebook right now, and I, I'm actually pretty excited about this, is that I'm uh, I'm really focused on blogging right now. And I'm trying to have a blog post. Actually, I just finished it. I have a blog post about living in every single city in my county. And right now I'm making YouTube videos for each of those blog posts as well. So every single city in my county has a YouTube video. And then I'm gonna have a YouTube video and a blog post for every 55 plus community and every military community. And ultimately I wanna have one for every single new construction community. And so I'm really building out this website. Um, and then I'm running Facebook ads, just sending people to that website. So really I'm just using the Facebook ads as that top of the sales funnel. And then I'm using the YouTube videos on the website to really convert them and build that relationship with them. Yeah, that's smart. It's so a that, low lead acquisition cost as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Super cheap. Um, mm -hmm. and, and those leads I'm actually giving out to somebody else. Um, and yeah, he's gotten a bunch of a handful of really hot leads, uh, from these Facebook ads and I'm just sending people to the website. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm really just using it as the top of the sales funnel there and then using the YouTube videos and the blog posts to really convert those, uh, convert them. Awesome. Now, when you get, um, leads from, uh, let's just like for, I get tons of people that are like, oh, I live in Illinois. I live in Pennsylvania and all this other stuff. What do you do? Do you refer those out? How do you handle leads that you get that are wanting to buy in another area or wanting information for their area? How do you handle that? So for me, for me, like my channel is very Orlando driven. So only the only leads I get are really local. So I, I don't do as many broad topics, I think, as you guys do, uh, mm -hmm. like some of the, the big national story stuff, unless it can tie back to Orlando. Uh, so Malcolm, I'm sure you have, you probably get leads from all over the country. Yeah. Uh, well, mostly, m mostly just Maryland. I get leads from all over Maryland. Um, but I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Like I refer them out. I'm getting, mm -hmm. I, I had a, a $600,000 um, listing lead a few months ago up in Baltimore. And I don't really cover Baltimore. I gave it out to a client. She's actually closing on that this month. So this month I'm getting a $5,000 referral check for a listing up in Baltimore. Like, Hey, I'm happy with that. You know? Hey, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I like love it. what, I mean, sometimes I forget. And then all of a sudden the check will come in. I'm like, what was that from? And I'm right. like, Oh, Hey, yeah, it's money. It's <laughs> I, know. Money. I know, I know. I have, I actually have to pick up a bunch of checks today. So, uh, <laughs> so hard sometimes. I know, I know. I know. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of people question, you know, should I only make city level content or should I make state level content? And I would argue that there are people who may move to Orlando that they don't know where in Florida they want to move, and the very first mm -hmm. search they may do is moving to Florida. And then from there, they'll kind of refine it and go down, you know, and, and like if you rank for that moving to Florida and you could kind of sell people and moving down to Orlando, you know, that may just be another route right there. You can yeah. compare the cities too. like you can be right. like, uh, why Orlando is better than Miami? Why Orlando is better than so you could grab people that were like oh, looking good. in those uh, other areas. So oh, you just God. just to broaden your audience a little bit bit I'm gonna, more. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why the cost of living is so much better in Orlando than Miami, you know, like that kind yeah. of thing. The taxes are so much better here than they are here. You know, you can right. always people like yeah, comparison, horrible. like a versus yeah. like a battle. Yeah, That's awesome. I do. I do that locally, like, like Nona versus horizon West or like different cities locally. Cause and those get a ton of views and, and engagement from people moving, but uh, that's a great idea. Cause I yeah. think people, there's gonna be a lot more people looking at Miami versus this niche area right. in my area. Well, people even Daytona to Orlando, they might be making yeah. that that a distinction distinction because I used to live in Central Florida. So oh, that yeah. I would do I used to like I would say that because people would compare those totally. two. Do I really want to use those versus. Yeah, right. Right. So I would do it. That's uh, that should be on your list. It's, I just wrote it down. It's on the calendar. <laughs> And I, I also like making, or I used to like making content just about like fun things to do in my state. So like if you did a thing, you know, top 10 amusement parks in Florida, like people in Orlando would still love that information. You know, if something's just a few hour drive away or so, or top 10 national parks in Florida, yep. you know, they, they would find value out of that. 
what's what's uh, what's other than disney what can you do in orlando right. other yeah. than disney what else is because i know that people come down there like well what what's that i mean besides universal studios and disney what else is there to do there i'm like oh yeah. my god there's so much there's you know so much. yeah right but you could do a video about that that's a great idea yep i agree <laughs> write it down <laughs> you can watch the replay of this later on next <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do get people that come to move to Maryland because of the military and they have no, they don't know anything about Maryland. And they tell me that those videos that I make about top 10 national parks or free things to do in Maryland are some of their favorite ones because it's just kind of, they feel much more comfortable and like they kind of have an idea of things and go out and do on the weekends uh, in Maryland. Yeah, I think so. Coming, a lot of this comes back to the, um, you know, the Gary V idea, like he was, like, if I was a real estate agent, I'd become the mayor of my town. It's right. the digital mayor of my town, right? And I know that's been kind of thrown around in our industry for a while, but I, that's, I think, why I, we convert at such a high level. You don't like that idea? Well, I, I think it, I, I think the execution of that between real estate agents has gotten so muted and muddled that they don't understand what that actually means. So tell and us so the differentiation, which, which, what you see the difference of. Um, I think a lot of times that what happens and I, and I, I don't want to, if I say it, people are going to be like, I know who you're talking about. So I don't want to, uh, like you have to be very specific and always mention housing in some way. If you yeah, make it bad about you and this particular restaurant coffee shop or whatever, and you barely skim over the housing part of it, like you totally lost people. You're disconnecting yeah. your audience to what you're really wanting to do, which is sell houses. So yeah. as beautiful as your footage is of the at hamburger or uh, the coffee pouring in there and the beautiful B-roll with the steam coming in. Yeah, great video, but no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. like they they think they're doing something really good and i'm like they're like nobody's watching it i'm like yeah because you're a real estate channel like what yeah. what did you do you did nothing yeah. you talked about you and drinking coffee who cares <laughs> nobody yeah, cares I think, I think that's a big piece i, I think it's really important part is like figuring out, okay, why did your people subscribe to your channel, right? If you're, if they came right. because they love Christina and they want to know more about you, that's all they want to know about you, then great. Talk more about your life and who you are and what you do, right? But if they came because of it's real estate, then you better talk about real estate uh, because that's why they originally wanted to subscribe, right? So it's, it's being, it's respecting that subscriber, I think is what you're talking about. Right. 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 And, but it's also the fact that the whole purpose of doing this particular YouTube channel in the first place is to get business in real estate. So if you're sitting there talking and making it about you, people are going to be like, well, what about houses? I really need information on this. You know, like you're, mm -hmm. you're kind of missing the mark, you know, sure. like, as pretty as the video was, you're missing the mark of what people are genuinely like sitting back trying to find out. Like, what is it yep. that they need to know? A good thing yep. to do is do Google searches of, you know, just like if you were a person moving to a new area or visiting an area, what is it that you would want to look for if you were going to Washington, D.C. and never have been before? So do mm -hmm. Google searches just like you would. And that's how you make videos on stuff that people would be interested in. Right. And then, of course, doing what Malcolm said, adding it to a blog on your website, then, you know, you're just adding a layer on top of layer. Yeah, yeah, I think that's wise. The blog piece, man, I'm excited for you. And I want to hear how that turns out because we that's like the next level for us is kind of getting into the more blog pieces. Because I think we I talked about blog. this before. Yeah. How did that work out for you? You said used uh, to. Yeah. Well, I'm like, uh, I've gotten extremely lazy in 2020. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but um, uh, I, when I came to talking about HOAs, people really were genuinely interested in HOAs. Because a lot of times the the neighborhoods themselves do not post their covenants on a website, yeah, so true. I would go to, I would go to the title office and I make a, a video uh, make a video about HOAs, tie that video to the to the blog post, and then I would say for uh, for the covenants for this neighborhood here, click this PDF below, and it, that that's what drove traffic is adding those extra layers of information about a specific HOA because nobody has it on their own website and it was just easy for them to collect it off of mine. So I'll, I'm going to validate what you just said even more. So I did this in Michigan when I, I used to live in Michigan, we moved here four years ago and uh, I was a sole real estate agent. And that's how I got a lot of our business was SEO, our old website and that kind of thing. And I still to this day have title companies calling me, asking me, Hey, so I noticed you had the covenants on your, on this website. Uh, and do you have the contact for the HOA? Because we're trying to get X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, Holy moly. And I still have, you know, buyer leads reaching out like, Hey, we're trying to see if we can put up a fence in this neighborhood. Can you help wow. us? And I'm like, 
<laughs> oh, geez, you know, so that's definitely, uh, and, the, and the website's kind of hidden. Like I don't even, you know, it's been taken down because I want to differentiate myself between Detroit and, and uh, in Orlando, but yeah, definitely works. Yeah. So HOAs, like people can't find it. It's a specific information. You're definitely yep. hyper-targeting, but they will, they will dig through your whole website trying to find <laughs> that, that information. It works. Yeah. So let me, let me go back to Gary V for a moment here, because I want to touch on this with digital mayor stuff. So is I've seen, you know, obviously like a couple of years ago, I was always watching Gary V and yeah, he talks about doing the digital mayor stuff and he's talking about, you know, go and interview the high school principal and go and interview your local restaurants and all this stuff. It, it, here's the problem is that Gary V is not actually a real estate agent. This is all just theoretical in him. It's just an, a thought in his mind, this digital mayor stuff. And I think the concept itself is good, but the actual execution of going that niche and interviewing teachers and interviewing coffee shop restaurant owners, that's not what really works um, to really generate leads. And I think you just have to go a little bit broader. And like Christina is saying, figure out what people are actually searching for and then provide that that uh, answer. I well, started I think, my I think, channel with his concept. That's exactly what, if you look at the beginning of my channel, that's exactly what I did was I interviewed new businesses that were coming yeah. into our area. I, I interviewed people that were, of uh, you know, that were in politics. I interviewed people. I did. That's exactly what I did. And it, it did. It still does, yeah. you know? So, so I think there's, I think there's a, there is a place for it though. So look, I look at it from a perspective before we started the video today, Malcolm and I were talking about like kind of our, my goal for 2021. And so we're looking to do two things. We're looking to grow our, our YouTubes and that's what this video is all about. That's what this mm -hmm. today, what we're talking about. But then we're also looking to grow a massive database uh, as well, up to about 20,000 people that we drip on every single week with a newsletter of, Hey, here's what's going on in Orlando. And I want to be the digital mayor. And those are the people that are already in our funnel that I need to keep engaged, right? That might mm -hmm. not really care about real estate all the time. And they don't want to know about interest rates and all this other garbage that mm -hmm. most realtors send out. So how do I stay relevant in their life when they're already in my funnel? And so I think that there is a place for that. That's what we do. And we get a ton of business from our database. Uh, and so I think, but what we're talking about today is YouTube generating leads. Are people mm -hmm. going to be searching about the principal of the new high school on YouTube? Right. And are they, they're not. They're not mm -hmm. going to do it right and so i think that you have to differentiate the two and understand why you're doing this and then kind of you know reverse engineering right. it from there right I, I would say if you if you look at it as a sales funnel those types of videos they're not discoverable videos they're not right. going to rank in any search they're not a clickable enough title for people to actually first discover you from those videos so you need that discoverable layer of content and then after yep. they subscribe they would find value in that Mm -hmm. like they would find value in that a lot of people would but it's just yeah it's not going to grow your channel yeah Correct. it's not going to blow your channel up this is not your viral no. moment yeah when we're talking about yeah yeah when we're talking about that <laughs> one video blowing up and getting you 500 <laughs> subscribers you interviewing the high school principal is not going to be that one video. that ain't it Thank Unless you. the like the school caught on fire while you're interviewing them, then it might happen. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. It's caught up in some scandal, and you're like, "Oh, look, I interviewed him last month." <laughs> oh, I know, I know. <laughs> so Ellen asks, uh, going back to the community page, she asks, "Does that show up after a thousand subscribers?" And I, I think, think so. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it does. Um, so going, yeah. Um, what about live streams, Ken? Are you doing much with live streams? Christina is having a lot of success with that. And I've seen a lot of other people having success with that as well. You know, we're not. And if I could figure out, so live streams, uh, I, I have that ability. Like shorts, the other, I think you mentioned something the other day about this, right, Malcolm? Shorts, I'd love to get into that. Yeah, you're not. But like, you, I, there's so many that are, right? Like better, like the story function on YouTube. I, but but okay. tell them, I'm not doing live. So tell us what you know about lives, Christina. Oh, you want me to talk about lives or shorts? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, both. I have strong <laughs> opinions on both of those. Okay, so shorts are, uh, they are pieces of content that will give you a, uh, you know, like a boost to your channel, let's just say. But the problem with it is it's going to mess up your overall analytics that you've been following to try to understand where content is working for your channel. And then it, it messes with your CTR and everything else because it's all combined to your information that's in your whole channel. If you're going to do shorts, I would say have a quick tip channel that is just shorts. 
and then direct them to your other channel with more information. If you want to expand on this, you know, so it's basically because it, they do push out that content pretty quickly to more people than they ever have because they want it to be successful. So if you're going to do shorts, make another channel just specifically on shorts, right. but direct them to your channel that has all the information on it. Live streams are one of those things that I had done for a long time and had poo 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 success on them like terrible and i like had done the like carpet the, that you got out you got out <laughs> yeah no it was like it was a like i did a real estate game show i made it extremely fun i had tons of graphics that came through i gave away cups i was trying to do everything to get people engaged on my live streams and then i've watched a few other live streams that i watched from beginning to end and i realized that's like people watching the live stream are like basically just wanting their questions answered. The, it's not about the the show. It's not about the free crap. It's about getting their questions answered. So I stripped all of that down. I quit using OBS with all the graphics and the animations and everything. Went to StreamYard. And I even found that even with StreamYard, I was kept kind of changing out the pictures. The engagement went down when I kept changing out the pictures. When it was just wow. me and the person having a conversation, people were genuinely more interested in that than they were uh, you know, like me trying to be fancy. So, uh, so you know, let's, let's talk about, so, so uh, for somebody that doesn't know, like, I know I, I have the option to do it on that. And that's about as much as I, and I've watched other lives. Is it something that like, it's a premiere kind of thing? Like, Hey, I'm going to be live on Friday at five o'clock and you let people know, or do you just go live? Um, I have a specific time that I go live every week. It's Sunday at three 30. Uh, I make the thumbnail and everything that morning. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to do the description and everything. Um, and then at three 30, I go live, you know, and, uh, it like, sometimes I'll have like, you know, 50 to 60 people on there, but I've had it as high as like 200 people on there. And what has happened because it isn't like a game show or anything else is that people genuinely watch after the live stream is over, which I never had had happen before mm -hmm. ever and so one of the ones that was the most successful is i did one with javier and we were really it was just a conversation between the two of us and that live stream has is still living on and growing you know wow. after the fact so it's it's totally worth it if you make it about something that people would want their answers and it follows your bucket strategy by the way mm -hmm. yeah so, so um that's what I do. I, I just make make live streams about things that I know that people like to talk about on my channel, whether it's alternative housing, uh, the people are very genuinely concerned about the housing prices and the cost of uh, housing right now. Um, they're worried about like uh, another recession and how it's going to affect the housing market. So those are the type of live streams I do and they live on for a long time. That's awesome. So let me give you my thoughts on these now. Um, okay, so shorts, I'm not a big fan of them for one reason, so they, they have to be less than 60 minutes, 60 seconds long, right? It's a very short video. I don't like them because they just show up on your channel page, just like every other video. And there's really no easy way to distinguish them when somebody's on your channel other than you, um, other than just the length of the video. So if somebody finds one of your awesome videos and then they go to your channel and they watch your latest video and it's this annoying little 45 to 60 second video, it, that's not what most people are looking for on YouTube. And that's why a lot of people are starting completely separate channels just for shorts and not having those on your, your main channel. And I, I've been looking and I haven't really seen any really big YouTubers mixing shorts in with the regular content. They really mm -hmm. do start a separate channel for that. And, and yeah, I, I can't imagine them really being that discoverable or really showing up in searches or anything like that. So I'm not a big fan of them. As for live streams, I think that there's really two different types of live streams that you can do. The first one is going to be like a Q&A live stream where you just connect with your audience. And the whole purpose of that is really just to build that relationship with your audience, get in a two-way communication with them. Um, Nick Nimmin, for example, he does a live stream every single Saturday where he answers people's questions about YouTube. But Nick says that his live streams typically don't have much replayability. And so what he actually does is he takes them down, he delists them after about a week or so because they, they don't really get many views after that. So that's kind of one type of live stream where you're just building that relationship with your audience. And that's something that you could definitely do. Now what Karina, Christina is somewhat on is that she's creating discoverable content with her live stream. So her live streams have very catchy, clickable titles and 
have a great looking thumbnail that's super clickable and it's really focused on one topic. Um, and she's, yeah, she's crushing it with that hurt. I've seen that's some awesome. of her live streams are getting 12,000, 14,000 views. Um, and I've seen like Jeremy Knight, he also has been doing some live streams, I, I believe. And he'll do one with somebody else in Texas in a different right. city. And then he'll title it, you know, Austin versus um, Dallas. That's so, smart. I mean, that's another avenue that you could do. You do Orlando versus um, Tampa or whatever. Tampa. Yeah. yeah, and have another agent on there and have a very clickable title and a very clickable thumbnail for that. My most so viewed, my most viewed uh, live stream uh, was fifteen thousand. You know, like it, it, at the day of it, it had about five thousand or five hundred to a thousand views, but afterwards it gained 15,000 views. And then the one right after that is 13,000. So it's a view that has 13,700 views, but it like at the time of it, it had about 700 views after it ended and it continued to build afterwards, which I've never had before. That's amazing. Yeah, That's amazing. I, I definitely, definitely get to add that in. I told and, Jeremy to do that live stream thing, by the way, because he was oh, getting good. bored. <laughs> So let me ask you this. So then I do notice like the, you know, the story piece, right? So like, I don't mm -hmm. follow so many of these channels, but like, I don't have access to do a story. What do you guys think about stories and how does somebody even get that? Okay. I have stories. It's at 30,000 subscribers. Um, I, I don't know what to do with them. I've done stories. I just don't know how I'm, I suck at it. Honestly, I, you know, I've done some like flippy little picture things. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in that 60 seconds that I have or 35 seconds in a story. I tried to do it more of like an Instagram thing. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I find that I, if like I, the ones that I do have the most successful with are the ones where I'm sitting in a house and I'm like, Hey, look at this freaking toilet, you know? And I'm like showing it that it has a bidet or something right. and that those seem to get it. But I don't know if those are going to be, cause they do subscribe. They'll show you how many subscribers came from your story. Yeah. I don't know how many of those people are actual people that are going to be interested in the content itself. You know, it's just then it becomes like a vanity number. Oh, I gained 70 subscribers. But are those people going to be genuinely interested in your content? Because I mean, I, I posted about a bidet, but it's not yeah. really, my channel is not about bidets. Yeah, you know? sure. Well, and then the other piece I was going to say, um, as we were chatting through that, like, if you look at a lot of these, it's, um, you know, like, I subscribe to David Goggins, but like, it says David Goggins clips. Right. So instead of the like you guys talk about the shorts, like having a separate channel, I was going through. There's a bunch of people that have like Joe Rogan has JRE clips right. and mm -hmm. the JRE. Right. So like I think that you're very smart in what you just said. Makes a lot of sense. So I got to implement that as well. So that's mm -hmm. strategy number three that I'm taking away from today. I'll tell you another one that you may want to add to your bucket since you're going to go ahead and uh, do these shorts or clips or whatever as another channel. Take those same clips, shorts, whatever, and put them on TikTok. And I know that people are like, oh, it's for kids. There is a lot of people that are already on there that are killing it on TikTok. So yeah. before it becomes the newest, latest, greatest in everybody's real estate minds, and they start saturating TikTok, get on there first and be the, the head of the, the ball, the head of yep. the game. Yeah, agreed. I, I, I installed TikTok finally about a month ago on my phone. I, I can't believe how much time I spend on TikTok. I, I know. Kind of sucked into it. And right now it's kind of a weird spot because what they're most, what a lot of people on TikTok are doing is they're just taking YouTube videos and clipping out like the best, like 10 seconds of it like fails mm -hmm. and stuff on my outdoor channel. Um, I had somebody take one of my YouTube videos and they stuck it into a TikTok video that got like over a million views on it. Mm -hmm. And my, uh, my nephew was like, I saw you on TikTok. I was like, I'm not on TikTok. And it, it was one of my videos about um, how to make uh, a DIY face mask. And they took mm -hmm. out just this little clip of me doing this little thing. And it blew up on TikTok. And I, it looks like a lot of the clips on TikTok are just stolen right from from YouTube videos. Yeah. Well, they'll even steal other people's TikToks. They'll download the TikTok and upload it to their TikTok. Right, <laughs> so you have yeah. to go through this whole content claim thing because yeah, I just, uh, I have a, a, like not a real estate TikTok, but I just was uh, entered into the creator fund on my, on my goofy uh, TikTok thing. Nice. It's so easy to pick up followers. I mean, honestly, it's the it was so fastest way to pick up followers. And I think it's smart to get it in, in now when you, it's so easy. Well, it's interesting because like, I think, I don't know about you guys, but like I have the amount of like cross promotion between social channels is quite incredible. Like the amount of like every video, um, 
I, at the end, I say, hey, if you're looking to buy or sell a house anywhere in Central Florida, I want to be a real estate resource of choice. Here's my number and my email, right? Every time. That's how we end the videos. And so uh, the amount of people, though, that go to my Instagram and message me on Instagram is I insane. Know. It's at least a couple a week that wow. they're like, hey, and they'll say, we found you on YouTube and for whatever reason, decided they want to message me here. And uh, so I think giving other people outlays and then also cross cross marketing is probably a very smart idea. Yeah. And it's like, if even if you never even put like, I've had them message me on LinkedIn. I've had them message yeah. me on Facebook on, yeah. I'm not even on Instagram. They found me on Twitter. They, if they want to get a hold of you and they like you, they will, they will stock your rear end and they will find yeah. a way to get a hold of you. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they don't feel comfortable calling and texting, right? Yeah. yeah. Very true. But the worst is when they add you as a friend on Facebook and they don't yeah. send you a message until you approve their friend request. Yeah. I, I've had that. And it's beyond frustrating. It's like, who the heck is yeah. that person? I don't, I don't know you. I'm not going to. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I must have 50 friend requests right now. And like, what, what's frustrating is I need to, there are, a lot of them are spam. So I need to go in and look at each individual person's profile, make sure yeah. it's not like an Indian account or something before I approve them. And so I, I get like 50, 70 at a time uh, Facebook friends I need to approve. So Rad has a question. Ken, at what point on your YouTube timeline did you start seeing consistent leads coming in? So uh, I had like, you know, the first three months I had nothing. Um, and then by month, I would say by month six, I was getting about a lead a week. And then uh, for the past year, it's been at least one a day. So sometimes it's multiple in a single day, but yeah, it's about one a day at this point. That's huge. And so at first you're just doing a lot of new construction uh, community type videos, right? And then you yeah, of, they're like, super hype, hyper niche. Like, you know, it was, and I, they were, I ranked number one on all of them, right? It was like, Hey, you know, the, the Williamsburg model by Ashton Woods in winter garden, right? There's, I'm the only video. And so uh, we get 25 views, right? But I mean, they're very hyper, you know, niche views, right? Um, but yeah, we weren't getting as many calls as we are now. Yeah. I, I think a lot of that, those new construction community tours, like, again, like they're fine further down in the sales funnel, but they're not that mm. top layer of discoverable content that you need. You need those bigger videos to bring the viewers in, they'll subscribe, and then maybe they'll like those community tours. Yep. That's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, what's one thing you would make sure you would do if you were starting all over again? Yeah. If you're starting a brand new channel today, Let's say you move to a new city. What 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 would you start doing with your channel? Um, I, I probably would go more broad topic uh, first, and then and go. But I, I would say consistency is the most important piece. Uh, but I was very consistent from the get go. Um, we we put out I think a hundred videos in our first uh, four months. Like they were all shot on my iPhone. I edited them right. on my iMovie. Right. It was very it was very consistent to begin with. And then, you know, as we moved into the more produced videos, it got to be only once a week. But I think consistency would be the first thing I would say. And then for me going a little bit more broad topic about my community instead of super, super hyper local first, uh, probably what I would do different. Yeah, I agree. That consistency is pretty important. I'm I'm terribly inconsistent. But yeah, my, my challenge with telling people that is that you see a lot of people who are consistently uploading the wrong types of videos. And like, mm, yeah. you're going to be spinning your wheels if you're just doing the wrong types of videos. Like consistency is important, but it's not like the most important thing. I think putting out the right type of content is more important. My, my first thing was I would see who in my area that I'm moving to is actually making videos and what are they making videos on and what is their top videos that they've made. And then I would, that would be, I would make my buckets out of what they've done that has been successful on their channel. And that's how I'd start off and consistently upload. So now let's, they've already designed my bucket strategy for me, upload once a week. And then that's how I'd start building it. Do you, uh, are you seeing a lot more competition down in Orlando nowadays? Yes, I, am. I know. I know that you are. I know because people contact me and they're like, "Hey, so there's this guy who's on YouTube." <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "Well, what is he doing? Make videos like he is. <laughs> That's it." Yeah. And they and they do and they do. So all of a sudden, I'm like, "Oh wow!" So I, I used to be the only one that would rank for these videos, and now there's all these other repeaters. But you know, like you talked about earlier, like people are going to gel with different people. And and the other thing is the amount of people that start and stop. Any right. lead, any lead generation thing like I you know farming is a big one like we still send out direct mail every single month and I know that if I'm consistent I'm gonna win because so many other people aren't they'll both send out one postcard and then they stop because they didn't get a call same thing with YouTube right they'll post a video two videos and then they're like I didn't get anything and then they stop so it's kind of an interesting piece 
they, they some people are like i've been doing this and i and i I've, for a year and i'm like you have 10 videos that's right. not consistent right. just because <laughs> you not even one year ago doesn't mean you've been doing it for a year <laughs> Well, you, you, in ten, so in 12 months, you've posted 10 videos. Well, let's start with that <laughs> information right. right there. Well, I didn't get any views on it, so I just didn't know. And I'm like, in, in, you have one about your kid's football game. You have one about uh, a neighborhood. You have another one that's a tour. I mean, like, what, this channel's a mess. You know, like, yeah. So, yeah, you have to have a plan. That's the whole thing. Like, you have to have a plan, a strategy before you even start picking up the camera and filming something because you're going to be end up like uh, Daryl calls it spaghetti against the wall method. Right, where you're like, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. Just, you know, like maybe this one will go viral. You never right. know. You know. Never know. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that. I know we're, 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 we're probably running out of time for you guys, but I I'm learning a ton here. So I appreciate your time. Uh, <laughs> so what do you guys think about that in regards to, um, you know, the consistency piece in regards to um, shit. I just kind of lost what I was what I was going to say in that. Right, like, like trying to get viral versus like slow, steady. I guess that's the difference. Right. Like for me, for me, thirty five hundred subscribers this year was a big goal for me. Like to get to five thousand, that was big. But it still seems kind of slow and steady, right? It's like twenty a day. I don't really have many days that are like a hundred subscribers. It's just fifteen to twenty five a day, right? And, and I'm okay with that. But I'm curious, what you guys think? Like, do you should you be trying to like hit those? out of the park or do you just stay consistent in the small gains or what, what are your thoughts around that? If is your ultimate goal to make more money on YouTube or is your ultimate goal to make more money in real estate, real estate, then you, what you're doing is what you need to be doing. That's it. I mean, like, right. is, is like, you know, people like, I don't know why, but they're like, Oh, you have a video with over a million views. Who gives a poop if it doesn't sell a house? Who cares? But if your yeah. goal is to make money doing YouTube, then yeah, that's a, that's a, that's what you want. That's what, exactly what you want. You know, my goal is not to be, kill in, in real estate. It's to make more money on YouTube and yeah. do more YouTube type deals, you know? So, you know, what you're doing is perfect for what you want it to do. You're layering all sorts of different ways that you can capture a lead that they can connect with you. It's not just a video. It isn't just a video. It's you're yep. sending out, you know, uh, flyers, you're, you're uh, capturing all these other uh, places on Instagram and Facebook. You're doing lots of things, not just one thing. And it's, mm -hmm. you're, you're successful because of that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I agree with that. So Christina has one video has 2 million uh, views on it so far. Um, but like, I, I feel like she didn't really do anything different for that video than all her other ones. Like she's consistently putting out good content and trying to make every video as good as she can. And sometimes one of these videos just takes off. And um, if you guys signed up for uh, Vid Summit, right? I'm going through all those videos right now. I was just watching one for Mr. Beast yesterday. And he's saying that the way to really grow is that all of your videos are really good. Make all your videos as good as you can. At some point, one of them is really going to take off. And how you really capitalize on that is that when they go to watch another one of your videos, it's just as good as that one. So just kind of consistently putting out that good content. And another thing to consider is that most channels, most like there's professional full-time YouTubers that have never had a video get over a million views on it. And like, that's perfectly fine. If you look at Daryl Lee's channel or Nick Nimmin's channel, look at like their last 20 videos. Uh, a lot of them have like 10,000 views, 15,000 views, right? And these are huge channels and they're still not having every video blow up. They're just kind of consistently getting those, those views. And that's just how most channels are. I would be perfectly fine if I got like 20, 30,000 views on every video that I did. And I never had one get a million views, you know? Yeah. But, but think about the topic though. How many people are watching right. YouTube to learn about YouTube? They're not. So it's very niche specific and it's making him money because th those people look, Ken reached out to Daryl because he saw some videos where they helped another real estate agent, was me, uh, <laughs> blow up a channel. Yeah, so he ended true. up, and I so he ended up, I paid him you first pay, time too, right? <laughs> yeah, you paid him right away because you saw that it actually worked. But that is very niche specific. It still made Daryl bank, you know. And how many people signed up for his jumpstart course because of mm -hmm. that? You know, like even though he's got ten thousand views, he's probably made X. <laughs> who knows what his ROA on right. that is? It's a lot. So who cares that yeah. he made ten thousand views? He's killing yeah. it, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and that's why you're doing it. 
Yeah, no, 100 percent. I think, um, you know, coming back to the power of video, like this is something when people are, you know, we're talking about it. I like, listen, yeah, I, we close business from YouTube all the time. But the amount of referrals that we get from agents because they also see that I'm in the video space or um, just you know, our sphere or there's so many ways that you can get leads because you do a video, right? It might not just be because you post a video to YouTube and they call you because of YouTube. It's so many other feeder ways that you can get leads because you're doing video well. It's like a, a really cool thing. I don't know any other way um, that you can grow your business that way, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, just like with my blogging and having the YouTube videos in my blog post, it's another great example of just another way to leverage your videos. Um, mm -hmm. it, you can use it in a lot of ways to increase your lead conversion, not just yep. lead generation. There you go. Yep. Yeah. And, and having that blog post it, you still have that layer of like, I don't know who this person is who's writing the words, but as soon as they see a video, right. all of a sudden the words become real and more alive because they hear your voice as they're reading it. So yeah. I think adding a video to a blog post is like supercharging it. Yeah. That's brilliant. So Ellen says, uh, hardly any people do a decent job with YouTube, at least in my area. They're making them, but there aren't anything I want to copy. I have to copy all your guys. Yeah, I mean, that's totally true. You can go and look at other people's videos in other markets and be like, yes, that was a great topic right there. Um, you know, like Jeremy Knight, he, you know, I like some of his video ideas for and uh, his area. And I may be stealing some of those video ideas from my area. Um so yeah, it doesn't have to be in your area. I've had several people copy my exact videos from Maryland and they literally steal my exact title and they steal like the exact same topics that I talk about and like their videos, they flop. They don't get any views, you know, because that's, you know, it, it's, it's so much more than just making uh, a video like that. You have to actually make it entertaining and clickable and provide a lot and of And don't video. think YouTube's stupid. You know, like you can't, like, you can't do that. Like if there's somebody in your market and you're stealing their tags, their title and exactly the same cadence and information, YouTube AI is not dumb. They're like, this guy just ripped off what this guy said, you know, like they're not stupid. They're going to, they're going to throw that down at the bottom, change up the title, just a smidge, add an extreme word to it. Like if it's, uh, the ultimate pros and cons of Maryland, you know, Real <laughs> pros and cons. yeah, the yeah, actual. Right the actual truth of moving to Maryland, you know, like, you know, change it up and make it sound yeah. more sensational. You're going to do a hell of a lot better than trying to rip off exactly what somebody else did. Even with my thumbnail that I took from Graham Stephan, it's, it's like it. It's not identical. It's not the I same mean, exact one. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's okay to take the, an idea for a video from somebody else. I, I published a video today. Um, it was, like 10 money habits that'll make you broke. And like, I saw somebody else making a video about money habits, like, oh, that's an interesting concept. And then I made it my own. I came mm -hmm. up with my own 10 habits and my own like little twist on it. And I think that's perfectly fine to do. And yeah, if you steal somebody's exact title and they see it right below that video, like, you know, it's not really gonna help you with your, your click through rate, I don't think. Well, especially when you ha they have a crummy thumbnail. Right, yes. <laughs> At least this year, I can honestly say, this was a year that real estate agent goes, you know what, I probably should make that thumbnail look a little bit better. Yes. I, I mean, like for so many, so much times, it was the same thing. Like every, I'm like, oh, look, that's a real estate video. You already knew it because it was like a bright background, one face off to the side, pointing to some words and there was nothing else. They had no like visual anything. It was like, yeah. what is going on? But every yeah. single real estate thumbnail looked exactly the same. You already knew what it was before. I just, but now people are really like, this was the year that people spent a lot more time really thinking think and so. adjusting and making those thumbnails more clickable and their titles. Yeah. yeah. So Ken, we got a couple minutes left. What are your goals for 2021? We're this time next year, I'm going to have you back on the show. End of 2021, where are you hoping that your channel is going to be? And what, what do you kind of see your business looking like then? Yeah, so uh, so our goal is is twenty thousand subs and to put out at least a hundred videos next year. And so uh, it'll probably be more than that, but at least a hundred videos next year. So just being super consistent, putting out really good content, uh, twenty thousand subs, and we're gonna close up just about twenty million dollars this year from YouTube. So the goal is to really push that. So if we could do forty, with what we have in the pipeline, with all of the leads and the follow up that we're doing, I definitely think it's possible. I think so, man. What, one thing I've learned in 2020 is how much you can grow a YouTube channel in just 12 months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Christina is a great example of that. Um, 
12 months ago, I looked it up. She was about 7,000 subscribers. Now, what, what are you at right now, Christina? I'm going to, uh, on December 31st, uh, 2019, I had just hit 10,000 subscribers. And I'm now just right, so close to 60,000 subscribers. Wow. That's, that's amazing. amazing. It's amazing. I, I think huge. This time last year, I was probably around 2,000 subscribers. I'm just about to hit 15,000 subscribers. And so you were, yeah, you were probably what, 1,500 subscribers or so at the beginning of this year. You're almost at 5,000 subscribers. So 12 mm -hmm. months from now, getting up to 20,000, I think that's totally a doable goal, especially if you start pumping out three videos a week. There, it's impossible that you couldn't. And if you throw a live stream in there, like, like just do a live stream once a month. Well, just well, like that. Yeah. That's my challenge to you. Do at least one live stream one time a month. And you can be like the monthly wrap up of the Orlando real estate market. Right. Uh, market update or something. Market yeah. Q and A. Yeah. Just like, and just, you know, at first no one's going to show up, but uh, you're going to watch. And then just like in your community tab, say, Oh, you know, have your questions ready because at the end of the month, I'm going to be featuring each one of your questions and I'll be answering them live. So put that yeah. in your community post. So you're going to have to do that at least once a month. Like, I don't care if it's the beginning of the month or the end of the month, pick it out. Yeah. I love that. And YouTube's really pushing live streams. And what I, what I noticed about it is it's, live streams show up in your subscription feed multiple times. So when mm -hmm. you first schedule it, it shows up in your subscription feed. And then when you go live, it shows up in your subscription feed. And then after you finish a live, I'm pretty sure it shows up a third time as like wow. a replayable video. So it's really like reaching out to your audience right now. Yeah. Has That's anybody good. done premieres? Like I haven't done a premiere mm -hmm. since it started. I did a premiere a, a while back like a long time ago, but I'm wondering if that like, as we're talking here, masterminding, I'm wondering if during a live stream, if you had a bunch of people on there say, Hey guys, I'm going to be premiering this on Tuesday, you know, right away. And we're going to have a conversation because this is on the topic that we're talking about in this live stream. I want you to get your opinion live of what you see on the video itself. And I can answer your questions live at live as you're watching the video. So I'm wondering how that would work because you're kind of making, you're building excitement and it would be instantaneous. I don't know. I, I just haven't, I was just thinking out loud. What do you Drive think? Some immediate traffic there. Get some anticipation for the new video coming out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not bothered about premieres. Even on Facebook, I think you can do a premiere and like nobody really uses it, I guess. Right. It's just what everybody watches it all at the same time. And you can like get into a comment section and talk to people. It looks like a live stream. It looks, and it's just like, you know, how like you have on YouTube, they have the live chat that, that comes up, you know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's a live chat while the video is playing. And so the person that actually made the video can answer questions in the chat as, you know, and you can say hello to people and whatever, and they can even, they can even super chat <laughs> during that, uh, during that live stream. And then when it's over, it's over. And then it, then it publishes, but at least you can have like, I think that's like with your loyal fans, you can have more of that conversation with them one-on-one -on -one as that mm -hmm. video is playing. And um, it just makes more, like more connectability. Yeah. To like those that relationship yeah. yeah. Level. Well, Ellen says this was a great video. I think it was too. I think we covered some pretty cool topics here. And, it's been so uh, long. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. So Thank I think you, that's a good, good place to end it. We actually have like four or five other questions. So I think that means we're going to have to have Ken back on before December of next year. Before December. All right. Sounds good. Before yeah. December. <laughs> you should be. So you should be at 10,000 subscribers in six months. So yeah. we'll, we'll have you back on. See where or you're less. at with that milestone. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank Ken. you. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.